Fox Business Alert, this robotic startup has got some mad skills. Skilled AI just raised roughly $1.4 billion in its latest Series C funding round, led by Masayoshi Son's SoftBank Group, boosting its valuation to more than $14 billion, triple what it was seven months ago. Skilled AI has also caught the eye of Jeff Bezos' private investment firm, Bezos Expeditions. Joining NVIDIA, Macquarie Group, and this latest funding round really has gotten quite crowded. The company builds the AI brain that helps robots learn any task from cooking and cleaning to factory and construction work. Joining me now, Skilled AI co-founder and CEO Deepak Patak. Deepak, uh, you don't make the robots. You make the omnibodied sort of brain software that enables them to think and do. How does it work? Yep. Yeah, I think uh, if you think about robotics, right, uh, robotics is the first area uh, uh, for AI. It's a 70, 80 year old field. And when you think of robotics, what co first comes to your mind is hardware. And that's how Hollywood has primed all of us, all the <laughs> movies and everything. And we see all these demos around us, but still robots are not there in the real world. And the reason is what they're missing is the brain. It's the brain that enables uh, uh, us as humans and animals to act in the real world. And that's what, the, uh, what we are building. So our goal is any robot, any task, one brain. So we call this omnibodied intelligence. And in essence, if we're just explaining it, because what we're seeing on the screen is a humanoid robot that is performing tasks, but how do you train them? As I understand it, your software enables them to, and I'm putting this in air quotes, watch a video yeah. and learn how to do things? Exactly. Uh, I think the, the background is, Unlike language or vision, like where you have chat GPT or LLM-like models, there is no data for robotics. So even if I have all the resources, all the compute, I cannot just train robot brain because there is no data. And this is where we learn from humans because humans in some ways are biological robots. Uh, we are working 24 seven, like they are videos. So we are robots learn by watching them and it sees how humans move and it imparts that knowledge onto itself. Deepak, here's but there's the thing. a catch here, though. Uh, yeah. so, so let me yeah. just jump in, because I just came from the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, and we saw quite yeah. a few humanoid robots. Uh, yep. Three out of four of them did not work. Uh, in fact, there was one kind of <laughs> awkward. I'm on live TV, and I mean, we went through it. It looked like it was going to work, yep. and it's on the screen. I, I was, well, there I'm just shaking a humanoid robot's hand. Okay, so it can shake my hand, great. Uh, but then yep. this yep. one on the screen, uh, was supposed to pick up my laundry and then put it yep. in the washing machine, and it just stood there. I was told, Liz, just throw the yellow T-shirt onto the couch. So I did. You'll see me do that. Yep. I threw it on there, and the dude is just sitting there looking at it. <laughs> Didn't move at all. Um, yep. When are we going to start to see these things scale up? And what are you going to do with the money you've just raised to help speed up that process? This is exactly like, what you just described in like the last couple of minutes. You put it so well. Like this is the problem with robotics for not one year, two year, five year, for the last 70 years. We have been obsessed about uh, building the best hardware, which is good. But what about the brain? <laughs> like brain is the reason. Like when you see a laundry cloth, how do you how do you pick it up? How do you fold it? Or even how do you know whether are you trying to put in the laundry, trying to pick it up? Like all that common sense is what is present in the robot, and that has been missing because there's no data. What we are doing here, we watch and we go on the internet and we watch humans do stuff through gazillions of examples. And now kind of like how babies learn by watching their parents. Okay. But then there is one catch though. If watching was enough, I could play like Federer, right. having watched his games uh, all over, right? And that's where the second half comes into play, where we let these robots watch humans and learn and then practice in simulation. And they practice, practice for decades, years, centuries in simulation, which happens in very short real time. I see. And these two are the ways how we scale. And that's where the, the capital is going to be used for, to scaling these to next level, like if you look at language models, like large data leads to better results. And that's what the same thing we are seeing in robotics. Uh, Deepak, 
listen, we wish you luck. I, I want your robots or the ones that your software is in to definitely do better yep. than the, the laundry kid that did not just sat there. Look, it looks like my son. Oh, I yep. see something on the floor. I'm not going to pick it up. Um, good luck to you. Are you going to IPO at some point? <laughs> Uh, yes, at some point, yes. <laughs> but it's a long journey. Uh, we're just getting started. <laughs> Good to see you. Please come back when you do. Thank you so much. Yep.